The Y provided a, a whole range from preschool all the way up to adults and everything in between. Well, I stayed at the Emerson Street YMCA uh, uh, during the time that I was going to Roosevelt University. Uh, it was my home and my workplace, and I, I enjoyed it there. I felt grateful. Uh, I, I, uh, there wasn't any institution of that kind, and that was at all for, for black people. Ralph Munch came to do summer school at Northwestern, and uh, Y was the only place where he could stay at that time. The other thing that impressed me so much, I miss so much in this community, was the mentoring ship. You looked at them like a father figure. Not only talk the talk, they walk the walk. Expectations were very high. They taught us a lot about being kind to other people, doing things, and service. Those values have lasted a lifetime. I was president of High Y as a senior in high school, and they had the Tri High Y, which was the female uh, gathering of teenagers. As a president, I tried to get them involved in, in uh, black history, too. We learned the black national anthem. We learned about Langston Hughes. Uh, Thurgood Marshall and um, uh, the local uh, alderman who was the first black alderman, Mr. Jordan, the people who were the greatest in that, and so you could aspire to become like them. And during that particular time, they did not have a chapter of the Phalanx Fraternity. In October of 58 is when we established our chapter, and uh, we began to have our fraternity meetings there. Every group of students, the black students who came, uh, there was a reception for them. There was this good-looking gentleman there who gave his name, James T. Morton. If it had not been for the Emerson Street Williams, I, I don't think we would have ever hitched up. <laughs> a lot of the organizations had teas there white tablecloths and your gloves, your Sunday best. Most of the time I went with my mother and a bunch of them would make sandwich loaves. Tea sandwiches and cucumber sandwiches and all of that. All the little flouncy dresses, bows in, in your hair that I hated. I always wanted to be a boy. I didn't want, I don't know, I just thought boys had all of the advantages. You see, in those days, the wild mostly was for the men, for the boys. I like to shoot marbles, uh, hop the train, <laughs> the freight that was going by Foster School. I was a tomboy. They, at the Y, they played checkers and chess. You had tournaments, you had tech checker tournaments. You're sitting there all around studying. We had the checker champ. I think he was third best in the world come through there. We called him Junior. When he passed away, he left us the checkerboard. You had so much talent that just came up to the Y that you wouldn't even believe. They turned out some top athletes. We formed a, a, a basketball team, which was known as the Bobolinks. And then the Clippers were the older team that played at the Y. Then we started playing teams from Waukegan, from Proviso, and from Chicago in particular. That was like the rivalry between Evanston and New Trier. <laughs> the Emerson Y and the, and the Wabash Y. He said, I was determined I was going to beat Evanston and that little Cracker Jack Jim. Never did. <laughs> Never did. And sometimes the teams would travel and some of the kids were able to do. They would travel to support the teams. Back then, we didn't get a chance to really get out the neighborhood. And that was, that was like taking a trip to Arizona. And I remember the coach, he said, be the best athlete that you can be. And, and what, what I liked about it is that he tied it not only to athletics, but he tied it to our lives. Whole community would come when we had games that we played against these other teams. I'm telling you, that place would be packed to the rafters. You know, if the Emerson Y, they had um, a balcony. Boy, that balcony would be crowded. I think there was too many people up there that uh, it was coming down. <laughs> They shared and hollered and carried on. One thing about the gym is it was a built way a long time ago. It was so small that the outer bounds were the walls. <laughs> when you laid one up, you ran. <laughs> Bam! You could kill yourself up there. It was bouncing off the wall. <laughs> it wasn't no, you know, space behind that. Uh-uh. Dodge the players like when they <laughs> fell on us. Oh, we diving after balls and, uh, you know, mm-mm. 
put on some knee pads, brother, because you was getting down there. Mm. Of course, most of the girls that were interested in the basketball players. I tease her all the time. I said, you saw me playing basketball in high school, and uh, you uh, said, I'm going to get that guy one day. He says that I had my eye on him back in those days. Now, I'm not so sure about that. But I did think he was a wonderful basketball player. They also had girl cheerleaders. So back then they had pom-poms and they would do the dance to the music and all that. And it was just an aura. Probably the most thing that stands out in my head because it was like the noise was just overwhelming. That was the place to be because the place rocked. <laughs> it rocked. <laughs> and they cooked. Uh, pork and beans and hot dogs. The team that lost only got to eat the pork and beans, and the team that won got the beans and the hot dogs. And you talk about some of the great games, we enjoyed that. All over the country, kids were going and getting scholarships to play, and that's the way they got their sales through college. I've never stopped to reflect on things that had an impact upon me when I was young. And uh, you know, this why it was one of the main ones that did that. I guess it was the senior prom. I think that was the highlight of my experience. There was the white prom at the high school, and the black kids went to the Y for their prom. Well, the prom, we'd go down and rent our tuxes, and the girls would get all dressed up, and we'd get their corsages. And... I got a chance to wear my first, I say, adult formal gown. And there was a girl there that had the same dress on that I had on, which was devastating. <laughs> Powder blue and peach uh, with a huge skirt with all these different panels. And I was so excited. And then as I think about that dress today, it was so ugly. <laughs> and sometimes we had our own little band. Well, I, I played the piano. The real talent of the group was a young man uh, named Ernest McDonald. Billy Wright, who had a band. Of course, uh, Nat King Cole came there a couple of times. Oh, that was heaven then. He hadn't become as famous. He could play a piano. He could truly play the piano. Yes, he could do the works. Freddie Cole was a young person that came back and forth. He used to play in Evanston, come down. And and go out with girls and play basketball and play music. Yeah, a lot of friends, a lot of memories. Some of which I'll never tell. <laughs> Every Friday night was a great dance. And we'd all come dressed to the nines. Bobby socks, white shoes, brown shoes, poof. We thought the orbit room was really cool because it had planets on the wall and and it had stars in the ceiling. And the you know, lights would twinkle, you know, like stars. And there was a moon that hung over here. And red and blue lights would flicker on and off. And we'd laugh and we'd talk and we'd drink sodas and we'd dance. And, and we just, we had a great time. Soul Records. The Temptations. The Supremes. James Brown. What we would do was try to do the dances that we would see on American Bandstand. And um, also, um, we had heard that there were a lot of beautiful girls from, uh, from Foster that would always be hanging out. I've always been tall, uh, and so therefore, you know, you just have to hope somebody that's going to be taller than you will ask you to dance. That was kind of shy, especially girls. Yeah. There's always more girls than boys, I can tell you that. That helped me overcome that. A lot of times the boys would be on one side of the room and the girls would be on the other side of the room. It was always like a nervous energy that went through you when a song came on that blew your mind. You, know, you always hope that you see somebody that uh, you, uh, you could catch, you know. Then you were going to walk across the, f the dance floor to a particular young lady and ask her for a dance and uh, hopefully whisper something nice to her. And you go down and dance, and you dance in between the lights, and it, the mood was just, we were chaperone in those days. My mother on occasion acted as a chaperone. Like if those guys turned their back and leave us for a minute, the lights were down. 
she could have stayed at home. And uh, everybody got an opportunity to dance with their favorite girlfriend. You dance with the, the love of your life, you know. It was, it was an exciting moment. I met the love of my life going to the YMCA. And that was my first kiss. And I was in love. I did have my first kiss uh, there, and... Uh, While you were dancing, depending on what the music was, you sink a little kiss. Oh, yeah, I got a few good kisses there. <laughs> Not me. I was a good boy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, the best experience that I could have pulled from the Emerson Street Wire. My mother and father said, now, you can't leave the Y at 12 o'clock. You have to be home at 12 o'clock. Probably the most fun for me was um, leaving the Y, and again, when the party's over, and then you got a chance to walk your girl or your, your hope-to-be girl home. Everybody that lived on the west side kind of came along together, and then there was a little restaurant called the Do Drop In. And uh, they would have the fried bologna sandwiches, and they were the best. Loved them. No one could make better sandwiches than that. And I wished I knew how or uh, what they used to make the sauce that they put on the bologna sandwich, because it was to die for. A fried bologna sandwich, you got, uh, you got people outside that are waiting. It was good, though. But it was always a giveaway the next day because the place was so small that the odor of the food would be in your clothes. So if I stopped, <laughs> she always knew. <laughs> Most of the time, the mother was waiting at the door to open the door to let her daughter in so that uh, uh, you didn't have any uh, chance to get involved in any kind of smooching or anything like that because the mother was waiting there to open the door. And you'd say goodnight to each other. And that was it. See you tomorrow. I would be the last one to go home and I'd be by myself. <laughs> Just, you know, lasting, lasting memories. <laughs>